Today we show off the broad-snouted caiman. This crocodilian species is super interesting, so stick around. Our animal mission is simple. Education in action, conservation in action. This is Camp Kennet. Hey, what's going on? I'm hanging out with Nathan Sweeting. We're at Smooth Waters uh, Wildlife Park, and he's got some new arrivals that are really cool species of crocodilian that aren't necessarily endangered, but you don't see them often represented in uh, in captivity here, do you? No, you don't. So, yeah. I mean, in that in that respect, they're pretty rare. Um, not rare in the wild, but definitely rare to see in zoological collections, es especially in North America. Yeah. Um, I'm sure there's a handful in private collections, but I mean, you, you know, don't see what them. difference does that make if it's if the public doesn't get to see them? And learn gotcha, and learn about them. So really cool. It's fun hanging out with Nathan because, as you guys know, I love crocodilians, and Nathan's got a lot of lot of years of experience. And what Nathan's real passionate about is working with these animals and kind of making, you know, figuring out how their brains work. Uh, it's definitely something that we're interested in as well because if you can figure out how crocodilians' brains think, you can get them to do certain behaviors, which makes your life more easy. Wouldn't you say that? I case? would definitely agree. Yeah. Plus, I mean, overall, you know, even if you're just creating a safer work environment right. for yourself or your staff, you're also creating a happier and healthier, more cohesive environment for the for the animals. So it, it, if their stress levels are gone, then then that's exactly what you want. It's kind of funny, man, because I tell people all the time to watch the channel. It's like, you know what? The best way to learn about your animals is to sit and watch them. And I just noticed you, um, we were over with the male, which we'll see in a moment, but the male went into the water and started to, just to kind of look as though he was looking for a handout. And I just, it always impressed me with Nathan that he's really watching the animal and trying to decipher what it's thinking. You yeah. know what I mean? Most people just like, ah, oh, it's moved. But yeah. you're right, there's a reason the animal moved. And uh, we're looking at the female here. So, you know, these animals are new to you. So what would be some of the things that you're going to be watching out for to kind of get them going here at Smooth Waters? Well, I mean, you know, they are new. So it's they're, they're new to me, and I'm also new to them. So I don't ignore that. Okay. Like, if I want her to trust me or respect me in any way, then it, it's something that has to be earned. You know, so I can't just say okay, you're going to do it my way or the highway and blah, blah, blah. I can do that, but that's going to affect any, I'm not trying to say bond, but the best thing for her is for her to trust me Yeah. and yeah. know that I'm going to protect her. And so now, look, she, you know, Tom yeah. got a little bit closer, so she's not feeling as sure. Yeah, secure. she's not sure what's going on here. So if I uh, Tom, watch you come move over to here. your left, like to the tree, and then just pivot off of the tree and follow the angle there. And there's, there's a little crocodilian communication. Yep, so she so you stay put and just rotate with the camera instead of following she thinks you're slow. What's really neat about where you're at and kind of where I'm at too is that you can dig these ponds and the water, you know, our water table, you know, there's a lot of fresh water under the ground. So he's pumping it in. And you were saying uh, in the wild, uh, these guys are not entirely like, but they're similar in habitat to some of the dwarf came in which, you know, they like a lot of cover. Yeah. Um, more pool bodies of water that are less than, um, you know, not like a giant lake. These animals are kind of built for more smaller uh, bodies of water. Would you say that? Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, um, I've noticed with, with quite even some of the, you know, like the spectacle came in sometimes, you know, if you give them the option for a nice deep pond, uh, kind of big area like that, and then the option next to that, like almost basically a mud puddle or like a little slough or something, they usually always choose that that little slough area. Well, um, even if they're coming back and forth to hunt, it's almost kind of like they have this security blanket in a smaller... Um, they can defend it better. Yeah. They can probably, another reason is, I know with American alligators in the dry season, when they create the gator holes, they're basically creating habitat for other animals mm -hmm. to just be attracted to. So the food comes to them. Yep. Uh, it might be easier just to catch food and guys, yeah, that's a possibility. you know, it, it's, it's interesting because they are intelligent in the way of being on earth for millions of years. So they had to last millions of years by doing behaviors that benefited them, you know, 
Um, but the one thing you got to look at, and what's so cool, uh, you had to, to explain to everybody how you would explain a broad-headed <laughs> okay. caiman snout. Like so, the broad <laughs> the broad <laughs> snout came, and one of the one of the biggest reasons why I was so excited to uh, get the opportunity from you know Kurt Harbsmeyer. These aren't my animals; they're okay. not our animals. They're just on loan from Kurt Harbsmeyer and Hid Hidden Exotics of Florida. Um, and they said, hey, you want them? I was like, heck yeah, let's get this thing done and, yeah. and go. It's it's such a unique looking species as far as crocodilians go. Um, like we said, it's not rare. It's rare to see in captivity, but it's it's one of those weird, unique things that just really shows the diversity of crocodilians. Uh, and the best way I can think of to describe it is like you had Bugs Bunny or Roger Rabbit walk up to you with a cartoon mallet and say, bonk that alligator on the head, and then you do, and it all of a sudden gives it this cartoon toad head. Yes. And it's a very specialized head design for what they eat and hunt and all that type of stuff, but it's still the goofiest it's, it's dang looking so thing comical, ever, man. but it's awesome. Yeah. And so, you know, we know we can kind of surmise what the animals eat by the shape of their snout. Gariol are going to be fish. Alligators would be turtles, fish, more opportunistic. But this is a more of a specialized uh, feeding mechanism, wouldn't you say? Like crustaceans yeah, and I mean, small turtles, I would imagine, the, things the, like that. The, the way the head is just kind of compact into this tight little, I mean, it's, it's built for crushing. Okay. You know, so they do have those, you can kind of see the jowls there like you see on an alligator and, and most crocodiles, but you can definitely see the definition in the jaw muscle there around the neck. But the way that head is condensed, I mean, it's it's almost like you could, you could probably take a conch shell and toss it in there and that thing's going to flatten that's it like incredible. I do a cracker. Yeah, you know, that's um, incredible. I do not, even though she is maybe pushing six feet long, um, I would much rather get bitten by an eight foot alligator than I would that little thing. Wow. I think the jaw, it's just, it's just going to crush. Ooh. Oh, God. Yeah, I don't want to think about yeah. that, man. But, I mean, so. they're, you know, it's it's that special specialized design, like you were saying with the gharials or some crocodiles are designed for more right. fish or bigger things. or. It's just so cool to be able to see this. Now, the male seems, oh, there he is. He just popped up a little bit. We had some cool shots of him from earlier, but the male, not much larger. Um, you know, just a little bit more girth on him and... Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, thank you, man. I just love being able to see species that we don't normally come in contact with and give you guys an idea and an education because education and conservation equals infinity. And good old people like uh, our friend uh, Nathan Sweeting here at Smooth Waters is doing just that. So if you're in Central Florida visiting the Orlando area and you want to see a really cool reptile park, you're going to want to look up Smooth Waters Wildlife Park here in De Leon Springs. And uh, tell them Kenan sent you. And uh, you do tours and yeah. get to hold gators, we, you do it all. We won't feed you to stuff if you say that Kenan sent you. There you go. You see? Know, <laughs> membership has its privilege. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> now, but definitely we'll come out. On you. Definitely come out and see. Yeah, He's sure. got a wide variety and you got to meet Trapper also. But go back and look at the video. Find a video we did here from a couple of years ago where we were hanging out with the big American alligator Trapper. Thanks, Nathan. I always appreciate no hanging problem, out. No problem, man. My pleasure. Yeah. Great always work. A pleasure. Looking forward to visiting the next time and seeing how it all evolves. Look at the eyes on that. I know. They're just so different. They're so different.